Welcome to Everything with Everett. This is a talk show podcast hosted by Everett McConaughey from Boise, Idaho. The purpose of this production is to share thoughts, voices, and information to further a discussion on who we are as individuals, communities, and a global society. Everything with Everett is open to all topics of discussion, faith, science, history, finances, social issues, and, well, everything. Be sure to follow, like, and subscribe. Visit everettpodcast.com for all the details. Did you hear that new voice? That's Molly Miklos of VoiceOvers by Molly, LLC. VoiceOvers by Molly, LLC is ready to collaborate with you to create the best voice for your project. Molly's voice is professional and clear, warm and friendly, with a versatile twist capable of snarky and sassy. Molly has a wide range of voice styles to provide a plethora of moods for your TV, radio, and character projects. Contact Molly today. She wants to collaborate with you. All the information is on her website, voiceoversbymolly.com. Well, hello. Glad that I could join you, since this is a podcast and you selected play. Today, I kind of want to talk about the new anti-abortion legislation that uh, became law in Texas. You know, that one where they circumvent Roe v. Wade by not actually forcing the government, the state government, to enforce the law. Um, Yeah, the... New legislation, if you haven't heard about it for some reason, allows private citizens to sue people that they believe had an abortion, performed an abortion, or facilitated in transporting a person to get an abortion or a medical facility that provided it. I hope you see the slippery slope and the dangerous precedence that that whole thing sets up. Honestly, you know, kudos for coming up with a way to circumvent a law that prohibits this kind of uh, action with, you know, Roe v. Wade um, by giving autonomy and decision-making to our women to allow them to make a choice for themselves of what their body does and doesn't do. You know, <laughs> like where, where does this stop? Like, you know, if, if that's the mindset, you know, why, why do we even have a government? Why do we have state governments? Why do we have a federal government? I think that we are clearly on a path as a country where we're kind of taking away what used to unite us of we all believe that everybody had access to the same rights where, you know, we believed in a constitution over the land and then everybody would follow it and obey it. Not this wild west of patchwork and states where you can have vigilante justice and a bit of Marxism in America. Like what proof do you have to do you can you have to go after someone in court? And then even like thinking about that from like a civil matter. So clearly if if it's a private citizen, you know, going after somebody else, you know, Jane Doe because you thought she had an abortion or she looked like she might have been like talk about gumming up our legal system with unnecessary court actions. And how do you prove that? And then also like what right does, you know, John Smith have against Jane Doe? Like if um, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it. Like I can maybe see it from, you know, the biological father's perspective. If like they're in an intermittent relationship, the, you know, the lady gets pregnant guy wants to keep the baby girl decides you know what 
I don't want a baby, whatever reason, aborts it. I can see some, some ground for him suing. But at the same time, too, like, unless you have the body, how do you prove the de- Like, oh, this is such a such a mess. Anyway, um, but I saw something that really spoke to me that I saw. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, and if you know me personally, I'm definitely pro-choice. I don't think that abortion is something that should be taken lightly. Um, I think that everybody has a responsibility, including men, to prevent unwanted pregnancies. Men need to keep it in their pants. Um, I'm all for regulating men over women because I'm sorry, women don't need to have everything piled onto them and be their responsibility. So this uh, article that I saw posted on uh, Facebook, I don't know the all the origins or background behind it. It's a screenshot of a post that somebody did. Anyway, just love it. It, it supports the mindset behind why I am pro-choice. Uh, so this was shared by a gentleman by the name of Brent Grabber. It says copied from a friend, so I don't know who he got it from or anything like that. Also don't know um, in this posting, it references my son. Um, I don't know who that is. So, you know, I don't know who actually said these words, but they're definitely worth considering. And I think that they make the best well-rounded argument for why this legislation in Texas is actually pretty dangerous. And it's a path that I think that this country does not need to be going down. So here it goes. Last night I was in a debate about these new abortion laws being passed in red States. My son stepped in with the comment, which was a showstopper. One of the best explanations I have read Reasonable people can disagree about the about when a zygote becomes human life. That's a philosophical question. However, regardless of whether or not one believes a fetus is ethically equivalent to an adult, it doesn't obligate a mother to sacrifice her body autonomy for another, innocent or not. Body autonomy is a critical component of the right to privacy protected by the Constitution, as decided in Griswold v. Connecticut, 1965, McFall v. Shimp, 1978, and, of course, Roe v. Wade, 1973. Consider a scenario where you are a perfect bone marrow match for a child with severe aplastic anemia. No other person on Earth is as close enough a match to save the child's life, and the child will certainly die without a bone marrow transplant from you. If you decided that you did not want to donate your marrow to save the child, for whatever reason, the state cannot demand the use of any part of your body for something to which you do not consent. It doesn't matter if the procedure required to complete the donation is trivial, or if the rationale for refusing is flimsy and arbitrary, or if the procedure is the only hope for the child to survive. If the child is a genius or a saint or anything else, the decision to donate must be voluntary to be constitutional. This right is even extended to a person's body after they die. If they did not voluntarily commit to donate their organs while alive, their organs cannot be harvested after death. Regardless of how useless those organs are to the deceased or how many lives they could save. That's the law. Use of a woman's uterus to save a life is no different from use of her bone marrow to save a life. It must be offered voluntarily. 
by all means. Profess your belief that providing one's uterus to save the child is morally just, and refusing is morally wrong. That is a defensible, philosophical position, regardless of who agrees and who disagrees. But legally, it must be the woman's choice to carry out the pregnancy. She may choose to carry the baby to term. She may choose not to. Either decision could be made for all the right reasons, all the wrong reasons, or anything in between. But it must be her choice. And protecting the right of body autonomy means the law is on her side. Supporting that precedent is what being pro-choice means. And that is why I am pro-choice. So I think that's something that's that's the dangerous slippery slope that I I really pray that people that supported this you know I I think that we were walking that fine line where you know things just seem like a great like oh yeah I'm going to get you and it'll jab in the side with you know the legislation and laws and court system and I think that this is dangerous. This is this is a thought that went too far. This is a thought that got too much traction and it's something that's rather dangerous for our our country. Because if this is the way of the future, if you do not have the right to choose what your body does or doesn't do, what's next? And I find it highly ironic that the same people that support this are the same people that are anti-vaccination mandate, anti-mask mandate to enter a business, enter a grocery store or a restaurant. They believe in body autonomy but yet they turn around and want to control a woman and her womb, uterus, and force her to have a baby. That's disgusting. That's not what America believes. And even if, even if we aren't, you know, all on board with what America believes, if you're religious at all, no religion forces their way on other people. Not the good ones, anyway. And it just it blows me away that we're we're literally in 2021. We are undoing progress that was made in the 70s, so many years ago. I just, I don't get it. Why are we so hell-bent on going backwards? Did, did America peak in the 1990s and now we're just slipping backwards and time's just going to start reversing? Pretty soon we're going to start walking into a ice age. Global warming's going to get so bad that eventually we have glaciers. The Great Lakes become ice again. So, if by chance somebody's listening that is not pro-choice and you call yourself pro-life, that's fine. That's a great philosophical argument and decision to have made. But I feel like we need to all agree that we get to choose what we do with our bodies. You can eat a cheeseburger if you want. I can eat a salad if I want. I don't have a right to criminalize you frequenting McDonald's. And you don't have a right to criminalize me going to the produce section. We 
We need to all be careful and we need to have these discussions. I know that it's not fun. I know that it's awkward. But we need to be sharing this stuff. We need to be finding out from those that support an opposite view from us why they do. Those that don't believe in the female body autonomy. And we need to remind them what their life could look like if they lost their own body autonomy. Anyway, I appreciate you inviting me into your day. I uh, look forward to talking to you again real soon. I know, not not a long podcast again, but... Hey, maybe uh, these nice and to-the-point episodes are good. You can always join the conversation. Let me know what you're thinking. Give me a call. Shoot me a text. 208-391-2808. It's available 24 hours a day. Don't worry about waking anybody up. It's not going to wake anyone up. It goes straight to voicemail. Just call it, text it, whatever you want. If email is your jam, you can send an email to my story at everettpodcast.com. Thank you for listening to Everything with Everett. Connect with Everett and other listeners on Facebook and Twitter at Everett Podcast. Everett would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts by emailing my story at everettpodcast.com. You can also leave a voicemail or send a text message to 208 391 2808. Choose to listen, speak with kindness, and have a great day.